Today, I'm diving into what might just be the best film emulation software out there, Dehancer Pro. Whether you're a pro colorist or just starting out, this tool really brings a lot of cinematic magic to your fingertips. In this video, we're going to break down most of the pro features, show how easy it is to use, and why it stands out. Plus, I got a special discount code for you guys in the description below. Be sure to check that out. I must say I'm not a pro colorist, nor am I trying to pretend to be one, but that's what makes the Hansard Pro so great. You don't need to be an expert to create stunning looks, but if you know your way around color grading a little bit, it's an actual game changer. Now let's go ahead and dive and explore what the Hansard can do. I do already have a clip here that I did, and so we're gonna kinda just touch it up again and just try out all the features. Before we look into the features, it makes sense to figure out what in the world Dehancer is. It basically makes your video look like real film. It has over 60 realistic film emulations and effects like grain, bloom, halation, and more, all designed to help you achieve a more cinematic look. With just a few clicks, you could literally transform your footage from this to this. This is a big reason why I love this tool because I really accomplished this with just a few clicks. So now it's time to talk about some of the features for Dehancer. I do have a video clip here here. I did a little bit of color grading already and did my white balance. So we're just going to be using the enhancer to kind of enhance it a bit. All right, guys. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is make sure I toggle this and there is no changes to my image. That just means nothing is on. If something was on, you can click obviously the enable button. Uh, but I like to uncheck everything just to make sure that I'm starting from scratch. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do after that is come all the way down here and actually switch this to normal. Uh, you want to do this so then it's not tasking on your CPU. Now, when we are finished, then we'll switch this over to high to slow. So then when we're exporting higher quality. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is come to the input and then we're going to click choose camera and then we're going to go Sony. And now I do use a Sony a7 IV. So we're going to look for that. There it is. Boom. That's really looking nice actually. And then uh, we're going to go with the last profile here. And yeah, there it is. Something I should mention about the inputs, they have over 130 camera profiles, and that's gonna include cell phones like the iPhones, uh, cause now they shoot log obviously, and then also drones. So like, for example, if we went to Apple, we should see iPhone, yep, there it is. If we go to DJI, we'll probably see some of the drones, and there they are. So, so far it's looking good. This is before, this is after. So I am gonna increase a little bit of the exposure compensation here, I like that. That looks really nice. I'm gonna leave temperature alone because I kind of already did my uh, temperature uh, thingamajig here. You can see this is where it was before and here it is now. So I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna leave everything else. All right, next we're gonna go to the film. So you don't have to per se go in this particular order. You can jump around, but I'm gonna just keep it really simple. Uh, a very popular uh, film is the Kodak Vision 3 250. So let's just see what that looks like. We're gonna click enable. So it actually does look pretty nice. You can see in just one click, uh, this thing has already made it look nice. Now, one thing about the Hansa that's really nice, it has over 60 profiles. So let's just click a couple random ones. So let's just say, literally this is just at random. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Kind of gives it that vintage look. Seeing food, let's try some of the Fuji stuff. Oh, I know this one. Oh, it's pretty nice. So this is kind of more of a black and white. This actually looks really sick. All right, so we're gonna go back to the Kodak uh profile all right we're gonna stick with the 250 it is more on the darker side i'm gonna just go a little bit not a lot boom that's it all right so now i'm gonna jump to the film developer this is kind of your contrast slider so we want to make sure we enable first all right and then, uh so we're gonna increase it a little bit so you can see it's getting darker and then we go the way it's gonna get brighter and you could also do a color boost you want to make it more vibrant or suck it up and it'll be basically a black and white I'm going to jump down to the print section and then we'll go back on top. That's kind of like the final layer. A lot of movies do this. A very popular one is the Kodak 383. Uh, so first we're going to go ahead and enable this. So you can already see there are some changes. I believe this is because of the analog range limiter. Yep. So it kind of just made some changes. Uh, so it kind of just kind of limits, you know, the range um, kind of makes more analog. So I'm going to enable that and just turn this part off. And then we could check out some of these. So it's this kind of looks a little washed out, dark. We'll save the best for last. Okay, so I see what it did. So I am more of a darker tone. So we could kind of adjust this. I may not actually use this. I might just leave it unchecked. 
Well, let's see. Let's kind of mess with it a little bit and see if we come up with anything. So this is changing a bit. We're kind of bringing some of that back. This is not bad right there. Again, guys, I'm not a pro colorist. However, you know, I think we're all good at moving dials. So this is where it is now and this is where it is before. So I won't lie. I do like some of the colors more of what it looks like before, but this also looks nice. It has a new look altogether. So let's kind of mess with this a little more. Try to make it a little darker. And now it's more closer to what I think I would like to see. Yep, and there it is. Yeah, I could go with that. All right. Okay, so now let's go back up. We're going to go to film compression. Uh, so the way film compression kind of works, we're going to go ahead and enable it. Uh, if we look at the highlights, it's very, very subtle. It kind of like reduces it. So like things that are about to clip essentially gets brought back. I don't know if it's going to restore something that's actually like really, really clipped. But for the most part, it does a great job. So it kind of just reduces it. And you could see down here, it's reducing the... Uh, highlights area to avoid clipping right so we're just going to go ahead and enable that and we could even change the impact of how it works so you can see more clipping less clipping more clipping less clipping so i'm going to actually leave it down here so so far you guys could see all we did was mess with the input the film the print and then film compression and also film developer so that's about five things and we already got a nice looking image. All right, so now let's move on. Next, we have expand. I won't mess with this so much, but it kind of just acts like another contrast slider. Maybe I can mess with it. I'll just make it slightly, very ever so slightly, very subtle. You can barely see it. Next, we got the color head, which kind of works like the uh, color wheels here. Uh, so let's go ahead and enable it. And then if we move to the right, we should see it go blue and more yellow. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. And then, you know, you got your green and magenta, your cyan and red. All right, but we're going to leave that alone. Does that say gang? It does. <laughs> gang, gang. All right, you guys didn't hear that. But if you click gang, they all move together. All right, and then you got your shadows and tones, right? So you guys already know what those are. All right, so now we are greeted with film grain. This film grain is probably like one of the most popular things that a lot of people are doing, especially in their cinematic blogs. But you can overdo it. So you want to make sure it's very subtle. There's no rules to this. It's what you, whatever you imagine your footage to look like. But if you use it right, film grain literally is what makes your footage already look very uh, cinematic. So Dehancer has the 8mm, 16mm, 35 and 65 I'm going to just pick out random for now. And I'm going to enable it. And there it is. You can already see there's film grain. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. And there it is. Literally looks like ants just running all over your screen. I'm going to go 65. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go 500 and should be a little more subtle. Yep. And let's try 50. Yeah. I like 50. We'll go with 50. And then you could also set how much you want, right? So even if you felt like 65 was too much, and you could kind of dial it back. The next part we have is halation. That's actually another popular one that people love to use. In this image, I don't really have much that's going to make halation really obvious, but it's very obvious more for like light sources. So for example, uh, an image like this around the light, it has this red orange kind of glow. Uh, for us here, our highlights are mainly going to be up here. So it's going to be more obvious in those areas. Let's take it on. You see, uh, but it's not really going to make a difference, but it did make the overall frame a little more orange, which is kind of what halation is, right? It has that red orange kind of uh, filter, if I may say to it. Next one we have is bloom. This is another popular one. It kind of adds a uh, soft kind of glow or maybe a mist to your overall image. Kind of, I kind of like to think about it as like kind of blurry ish. It looks kind of dreamy. So you could actually achieve this result with a filter. So this is the snow mist. So you could see right here through my skin, it kind of just looks a lot more softer and a little more glowy and dreamy. So you could achieve that with a filter, but if you don't have it, the enhancer allows you to add that in post. So let's go ahead and turn it on, enabled. So we are gonna lose a little bit of detail because it is kind of adding more of a glow 
to it. So we're gonna turn it on and we kind of, I'm gonna overdo it just so we see what we have. So there it is. So if you look around my size here, let me zoom in a bit. If you look around, it literally looks like a blur, like a dream. That's why they say it's a dreamy look. Next up is film damage. This one, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep it, but this is a very popular one. So as it's playing, we'll see like literally random tears, uh, like the film tearing. So let's see if we can find one. I see some, there they are. Like they're very, very subtle. Uh, let's make it very obvious for you guys so you guys can see it. Do it again. There it is. So if you look very subtle in random places, you'll see a little white or lines or little dots. So that's all it's doing. It's adding some film tear. Do we really need the film damage? Probably not, uh, but I'll just add it just cause we can. And I'm just showing you guys examples of what the answer can do. Next up we have is film breath. Uh, for this, the website says it's kind of like an accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color. The way I like to think about it, it's all of these, but kind of like flashing. Drop down to eight. Let's see if it's more obvious here. There it is. Oh, it's definitely more obvious here. So here it is. You guys see that? There's a lot of movies I can't come to mind. I've seen this on, I think Kill Bill had something like that. We don't need it for our image, so I'm just going to take that off. So next up we have is gate weave. Uh, if we enable it, you notice it kind of zooms in and it's kind of act like someone was hand holding the camera and was moving it ever so slightly, but obviously no one's moving it. So if we go ahead and enable it and press play, we are going to see things kind of shift a little bit. So here we go. And there it is. You see, literally looks like someone is sh shaking it. So we could even make that a little more subtle. Let's say maybe a 35. Let's see how a 35 acts towards that. Yeah, I like that. I actually do like that. It adds a little bit of movement. So that's pretty sick. Now let's look at the overscan. Now the overscan is going to be more like a uh, kind of like a frame thing that happens around your footage to kind of just make it look more like film like. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on, enable. So you can already see the frames I was talking about. And you can kind of mess with it and, and, and see whichever one you want. I probably won't be using this for our image, but just so you guys can see, you know, we could kind of mess with it more. You could do ultra, super, widescreen. I like this one, it looks kind of cool. We won't keep it on my image, but it looks, it looks pretty cool. All right, and then we have ultra. Again, this is pretty sick too. I don't have a particular use for this feature right now in this frame. However, it's nice to know that it's there and you could actually kind of make some changes here. You could adjust more of the scale. Uh, you can even play with the exposure. You know, it's gonna expose the, the sides right there. And then you could change it from vertical to horizontal, which is actually pretty sick. Yeah, that's a pretty sick kind of thing there. You can change it from negative to positive, right? Or even turn it off altogether, which is kind of adding the, the black borders, all right? And then you got negative and positive again, and then neat and sharp and rounded. And so that's kind of just changing the sides, right? So we go rounded and got sharp and got normal. Yep, that's basically it. But again, I'm not gonna be using this. Next up is vignette. You guys should already know what that is. This feature is literally overdone all the time. Uh, when you enable it, it's going to get darker on the sides of the frame. So if we make it a lot bigger, we should see it getting darker. Okay. And we could make it change the exposure and whatnot. All right. But I'm not going to talk much about that because most of you guys already know what that does. Next we have is the monitor and this is actually pretty nice. It has false color. Not all cameras nowadays have it. They're starting to have them, but if your camera doesn't have it like the a7 IV, you could actually turn on false color. So you could kind of see on my skin, it should be on that bluish greenish range. If you ever needed false color, it's right there. And you could also click this for the clipping indication. Okay, so next up we have is the output. This is basically a master slider to adjust how much impact or better yet, how much of the effect it's gonna show. So if we go all the way to zero, it should go back to the original log format we did, boom, and there it is. Right, so if we go on and off, it will make a difference. And then if we go all the way on top, we'll show everything we did. So we felt like from all the things we did, it's a little bit too much. 
and you could actually just do a master pullback which actually kind of could be useful sometimes but i'm going to leave it the way we have next up we have is the LUT generator now this one is probably going to be a huge deal for people who uh, record with LUTs on so i am i do it for sure like for example when i am recording i don't like looking at my image at log all the time so i'll apply the onboard LUT but if your camera like the fx3s uh, and some other cameras allow you to input LUTs you could actually export where your current frame is and i guess whatever computation your camera would figure it out could actually show this as a LUT now that is uh that's 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 worth the money right there guys like literally from whatever setting you do you can export it drop it to your camera and that LUT will be showing okay so lastly what I'm gonna do is apply all of this to my footage so we do this it should affect all of them obviously every frame has its own adjustments that's needed uh but for just this example I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it and then I'll just ever so slightly each one and then we'll play it all together So what are the cons with the answer? My only real con with this plugin is really just the price. And I'm pretty sure other reviewers have probably mentioned this already. Editing softwares are getting a lot better day by day. And some of these features will be offered or are being offered. However, they're not as easy or great as Dehancer makes them. Or better yet, it doesn't have all the features Dehancer has. So I will say Dehancer does for sure still has its own lane. To wrap up, Dehancer is really without a doubt one of the best film emulation softwares out there. I will be using it in all my videos, even this and going forward. It does offer a lot of functions and customizable features that really you can grow into and get better at as you get better at color grading or whatever it is. Now you can download a free trial on their site. If you do decide to buy it out, don't forget to use my code. You will get a discount. And also do check out this video next. I shot on the new iPhone 16 Pro Max in log. I color graded and also used Dehancer Pro. With that being said, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.